okay, this this is going to be one of my less um, hyperactive reviews, or maybe not review. Reviews not the right word. Maybe a final judgment um, going on here regarding my <laughs> my well documented love for the Nikon D seven hundred. And my ridiculous uh, gas gear, GAS, gear acquisition syndrome uh, that I've got where um, I just keep on buying more stuff which I don't need. Uh, <laughs> some of you will understand where I'm coming from here. The, so I, I, I've now, I can now say I've done the D600, the D750, the D800, the D810, the D700, and the D4, which requires a four-letter word before the four. Oh, it's just such an astonishing camera in every way oh i'm okay i'm trying i'm trying to lower the hyperactivity here okay i'm trying trying to trying to calm it down um i currently have it with the 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 10.5 millimeter fisheye and uh oh, it's still still beautiful there you guys are um the the iso performance on screen, now th this is going to hurt some butts out here, compared to the D700, on a 27 inch Mac, not hugely different. Certainly not at the price of going live, the, the amount of um, ad adulation? Is that the right word? I may have just made that word up. That this camera got for oh my god, it can go to, it can go to twelve thousand ISO or twelve thousand eight hundred, and it does that very very well. The Nikon D seven hundred goes up to uh, six thousand four hundred, so it's it's one stop higher that it goes. But what I would say is that it's a little bit cleaner in the images, even though it's sixteen megapixels. It's a little bit cleaner and goes a little bit higher. But the important thing to know is that it's a little bit. Currently, my GH4, that goes up to 12,000 as well. In fact, no, I think it's up to 25,000, which is like an H1 version um, on this. So, in terms of current cameras out in the market, you can get cameras which can do the equivalent ISOs of this, maybe even higher and all that kind of stuff. But the le the quality of image that you get and how clean they are at the higher ISO images is quite flabbergasting. <laughs> but so are the D700. Flabbergasting OMGs. Flabbergasting OMGs. Plus one is how I, how I would go about it. And um, so, uh, sensor wise, uh, there is zero zero point zero 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 percent to complain about from the D uh, D four. Um, if anybody says it's not enough resolution, then you clearly are a, a, like a very highly paid stock photographer. Uh, or product photographer who you probably don't buy your gear is probably the in-house advertising companies that buy the gear for you to use and it's probably Hasselblads. That said. Um, so not, not dissing off the, the D800, again a fantastic camera and the, the D810 uh, in terms of it's so good for people who have time. So the D 836 megapixels and the amazing image quality you get with it, with the D800s and D810s, is something which really requires a lot of time 
and a lot of um, yeah, a lot of time, a lot of effort to really get your values worth. I think that's probably the best way to describe it. Values worth out of um, the images. What I would say about the 12 megapixels, the D700, and the 16 megapixels of the D4, is that their file sizes in RAW lossless compressed. That, that's how I do it. Or law, uh, RAW 12-bit RAW. That's why I shoot. I shoot 12-bit. I have to admit, I'm sorry here. I shoot 12-bit lossless. 12-bit uh, compressed RAW. Oh, bad me. To date, I haven't noticed any difference between the two of them, but uh, between that and 14-bit uncompressed, super huge files, um, it, it makes no difference, uh, uh, and it has have it has no effect on noise in the in the images that you get whatsoever. I've lost my I've totally lost my train of thought on that one. I'll cut this bit out. Oh yeah, so not dissing the D810 because that for people who are dedicated amateur photographers, enthusiast photographers, the D800, D810, go get it. As a workhorse, it's a fantastic body. As a workhorse for high, uh, high flow, lots of flow, lots of flow, doing lots of stuff, a sensor, it is overworked. It's you, you effectively for me for my work. I'm shooting around about two to three hundred photos uh, at max, three hundred photos a day, um, and that requires me going out, getting the keys, going to the properties, shooting the properties, returning the keys, driving to my office downloading the files, having them uploaded, downloading the video files at the same time, having the video editing software on another computer set up, the uh, photos on, on one computer and then editing them all and sending them all off. So, whoa, combine all that together, 36 megapixels is, is, uh, is not helpful for my workflow. If you're a wedding photographer, I would also say a full-time wedding photographer, so you were doing it every day, the, the requirements that you would need to be doing it with a D700, but to, to do it with a D800 in terms of high resolution are just, uh, you, would, you, need, you would need to be a, a company where you have in-house editors, who are an in-house workflow managers effectively and outhouse photographers so it would have to, it's not you're a guy that you and your wife go and take photos at weddings each weekend because that's it's too many photos for you to deal with and try and edit and uh, that kind of stuff so only if you're a company maybe the d810s but this is where the d4 even at 250,000 actuations, sorry, I'll say that in a better way, a quarter of a million photos <laughs> already taken, this camera is faultless. Oh, it's just so annoyingly faultless. Um, once, once you have programmed your brain to understand where the buttons are and you get over the like I still haven't figured out I've, I throughout my time that I've had this never used the the, the, the voice memo thing uh, whatever that is I've never changed quality never used that uh, however the white balance I have because sometimes I'm in a house with clients and if I'm shooting and it's on water, uh, auto white balance and it kind of doesn't quite work with the flash, it's making it a bit cold, that doesn't look so good uh, to the client. So sometimes then I'll use, oh, just change that so it makes sure that all the photos come out nice and warm so the client's like, oh, my house looks really warm and inviting. Um, but the, uh, this is something which 
I, I should mention the size of the gear does not make you a better photographer. However, clients don't know that. <laughs> they are just like shockingly and just shockingly the amount of um, houses that I've been to where the owner's been in or the owner's son, son's been in or uh, there's been a bloody film crew in there. The amount of people that give you extra kudos for having a stonking big camera is quite impressive. I, 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 there is a marked notice difference um, from the way clients, if they're talking to like one of the property managers and I'm in there to take them photos, they'll go, oh, do you want us to move? Do you want us to move and get out and tidy up when I've got this? When I'm shooting with my pants on GH4, they're more like, are you, are you coming in this room now? Have you done the other rooms? All right, okay, it's, it's a little difference, but it makes a difference. And I just think if you're a wedding photographer and you're needing to impress clients, your portfolio is the number one thing that they will look at after they've seen the camera that you're holding when you're meeting them. So, if you want to have a good impression, um, again, if, if you're a wedding photographer uh, or, or an aspiring wedding photographer and you're starting to do like more and more, like two weddings a month and all that kind of stuff, if you're up to that level um, and you're, you're getting the money coming in, spending your cash on a second hand, third hand, fourth hand, whatever hand, half life D4, as in this is rated to a 400,000 actuations, let's just say half a million, um, then you can save a lot of money to get the D4S or the D5 that's just come out. They're just the expensive ones just now, but you can get this. Sometimes people will throw in like a 64 gig XQD card, because I think that came with them, for around about two grand. Maybe two and a half grand. That, that, that's, that's kind of there, there and about. However, as a wedding, as, a, as a, an aspiring potential wedding photographer, you should be somebody that's already got the lenses, so it is just a, a single investment. And you should already have a backup camera. The holy grail of second-hand wedding photography camera gear of ultra super awesomeness is this combo. The D4 second-hand two grand. Let's see if we get in there. The Tamron 15 to 30 VC F2.8, you get full group shots and everything there, you're getting that for about £700. This, uh, maybe not the 50mm, take that, get the 50mm in the bag, but the other lens, don't have it. The 24-70, I do have it, I do have that lens, it's, not, it's just not here, it's upstairs. 24-70. Again, you can get that second hand, you can get the Tamron version, which also has VC. You're just sorted, absolutely sorted. Low light, amazing focus, and stick an SB900 on it. You are uh, ready to go, and, and as I say, if a client has booked you to come, uh, if, if a potential wedding customer has come along and said, hey, can you meet us? We want to talk about maybe if we're doing uh, our wedding with you. We're seeing a couple of other photographers as well. If you rock up to your meeting, usually in a cafe, usually in like Starbucks, and you're going, oh, I've just been out for a shoot, I'm just gonna put my camera down. Here's my portfolio. Comparing that to somebody who comes along with their, I'm sorry, I don't have any crap cameras to explain this, but with their little camera, or maybe no camera at all, and then shows their portfolio, 
if you have equally good portfolios, that may, in effect, show that that person is a more skilled photographer than you. However, the client will go, that oh, other guy had a huge camera. It looked really big. Matt, did you see the size of the lens? He must be better. I can't say that that's how it is, but that's that's how it is. Um, so yeah, if you're like already in the in the wedding photography scene, the resolution of the D seven hundred, the twelve megapixels, is more than enough for every single wedding album that you will ever print, including cropping. The D four, the sixteen megapixels, or is it eighteen megapixels? I don't know. I've I've, I've actually not bothered looking. Again, is uh, more than enough for the biggest double page spread cropped panorama photo that you're ever going to take. It's not a problem. And with this lens, you're going to get sharp uh, uh, wide group shots as well. However, this one at f2.8, sometimes if the group's too big, don't do the group shots at f2.8. You're obviously, you're obviously not going to do that, obviously. I'm sure you know that. So, right, the point is, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this stuff? What am I doing with all this gear? Well, to start off, I sold, I sold the, as I've already said, I sold the D810. Way beyond my requirements, slowed down my workflow, not very good. Fuji S5 Pro, amazing camera. It's really old and it's faulty and it's only an APS-C size sensor and I don't have a wide lens for it anymore. So that's, I can't sell it because it's faulty and so that just stays in my drawer and it's just my little kind of, my little pet. My little, uh, you, you are my gerbil that I keep around and I just look at you and just mm, touch your buttons. D700, unfortunately. There's a fault with it, and the seller, I bought it from eBay. Bit of a bit of an issue. It's going all back. Their claims are going, you've changed your mind. I clearly showed with evidence the fault. Not it may not have been with the camera, it may have been with the additional battery, it's impossible for me to tell. Um, but there was a fault with it. So I'll, I'll get back to this one, I'll get back to this one. <laughs> the D4. Astonishing camera, fantastic resolution. For my workflow, would totally work. Um, for impressing clients, again, it has worked. When I have gone round to like a massive two million pound property and the owners welcome me in and I open my camera bag and I'm like, hello, I'm here to shoot. They're like, cool, nice, nice cat. You get a lot of comments of nice camera when you have a D4. Um, however, again, it is far beyond my needs. It's, it's ISO ability to go up to uh, 12,000 ISO. I don't go above 1600 ISO. Like, I, like 16, 1,600 is the max I ever need to go with my photography, even if I'm, I'm in a dark house, because I'm always using flash. And well, if I'm in the dark part of a room, I use the flash to brighten up the dark area, so the, the bright area is like balanced and all that kind of stuff. But I'm never going up, never above 2,000 ISO, unless I've accidentally put on auto ISO and and uh, and forgotten to bring my flash or something like that and then tried to cover up any mistakes there. So this is going away. I am gonna sell it. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, but it is pretty much, it is pristine for half a mil, no, for, for a quarter of a million photos that it's taken. There is not a scratch on it, there's not a single scratch on it apart from that one and a couple down there. But that's, that's, that's not a single scratch for a quarter of a million photos. Um, I, it, it, it's a fact, it can do 11 frames a second. 
the additional problem is this, as you saw in my original video, weighs three kilograms worth of gear. I've got a bit of a sore back and effectively this is now turned into only a photo camera when my Panasonic GH4 is my photo camera, my video camera, my gimbal camera and my, when I'm doing my floor plans, my low resolution video recording camera as well. So I am now officially goodbye Nikon, back to seller, selling this Nikon, that one doesn't really work so I wouldn't sell it on eBay um, and I um, like I, this, this is like a, um, this is like a coming out, you know, I like coming out kind of videos. I'm gonna go micro four thirds from here on in. Like, oh, that's that's a bit. It's a bit like it's it's tough for me to say. I'll still have these kind of cameras, but in terms of all my work. Micro Four Thirds, it's 16 up to its now 20 megapixel range. Its lightness, its form factor, everything is just exactly what I need for my work. And additionally, when I am now taking photos of my baby, of my family, down at the park, I never want to bring a big three kilograms performance you know, this is for people who are at the size of the Olympic stadiums, not for guys in the park with their kids on a Saturday who are fed up of taking professional photographs because they do that all during the week. But going to the park with the GH4 or my other camera, which I'm about to get, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's They do exactly what I need. Image quality has got to the point where even... Micro Four Thirds is enough to make me say goodbye to Nikon full frame. I've said it, so therefore, that's it. <laughs>